Tune in to WSB Channel 2 for your official Georgia Lottery drawing and check out the Players Club at GALottery.com. What will the coronavirus concerns mean for kids returning to school? CBS 46 is committed to giving you the insight, understanding, and answers you need every morning to help your family safely navigate this uncertain school year. CBS 46, your school authority. It's time to get your home insanely clean. Zero Res cleans like no other with no harsh chemicals and no sticky soapy residue left behind. Right now, get three rooms of carpet clean for $139. Plus, when you mention Kristen at 94.9 The Bowl, you'll get a hallway clean for free. Schedule online at Zero Res. Shit is narrative back, so you got that going for him. Let's talk about Kodak Black. You know, if uh, we were all rooting for you as a person, so he has uh, reportedly entered a three-month treatment program after failing a drug test. Come on, uh, man. Now he had like a supervised prison release in his federal gun case, and uh, he came through with a positive test, which led to a court hearing this week. So he has to complete 90 days in the residential program. Why would you do this when everybody rallied for you to get out, and Trump gave you a pardon, and you had issues in jail with the COs? It becomes a, a psychological thing. I mean, anybody who's listening to that, dealt with drugs at a high or even low level, it kind of just be calling you, right? Whether you might, oh, this little joint ain't gonna affect nothing, or this little this that ain't gonna affect nothing. And next thing you know, it's chemically bonded to your DNA. You can't operate without it. And look at this man. This man has done a ton of drugs. Drugs have been a part of Kodak Black's life for a long time. And I just think he just needs to be away from it long enough to where you know, it's out of the system completely. Because even when he got that opportunity, he was able to score. He should be able to smoke weed, though. Like, come on, just calm your nerves. <laughs> kill, kill people. But, you know, you know, we're just not there yet. Maybe in a couple years, but not there yet. Last but not least, man, if you're a Netflix fan, be sure you check out the trailer for The Harder They Fall. Brand new joint with Regina King, Idris Elba, oh, and yeah, You get a new song from Jay-Z and Kid Cudi on that soundtrack. Wow. So, Already Home was my song. Remember when they did that together? Big tunes, man. I'm watching that trailer like it was the movie. Anyway, that's it for me. For some stories of follow on Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud, H-E-A-D-K-R-A-C-K. And coming up next, Angie has talked about a young lady earlier who was catching some black but giving lobster tails to a kid for the school lunch. And we got the lady on the phone. That's how we move yo. It's the morning hustle. because I love to cook, but that also means a lot of greasy pots and pans. So we can't... Fix in the middle of the pandemic, which was very unpopular, and on top of it all, he was just seen as a very dull and stiff sort of communicator. Now, Japan is holding general elections this fall, and the ruling party was afraid of losing seats in parliament, and they did not want to go into that poll with Suga as their leader, so he was forced to quit. I spoke to uh, Professor Corey Wallace, who's an expert on Japanese politics at Kanagawa University outside of Tokyo. And interestingly, he noted that Kishida is not seen as a great communicator either. But it may not matter as much because the circumstances are now different during, from during Suga's tenure and the COVID situation is not quite so bad. Let's 
hear what he said. Japan really is coming out of the worst part of fighting the pandemic. We can expect some kind of economic recovery, so shit of being slow and steady may not necessarily be a major issue for the party ahead of the general election. And as you note, infections are down 90% from their peak in August, and for the first time since April, no region in Japan is under any sort of state of emergency, and about 58% of the population has now been fully vaccinated. All right, so what can Japan and the U.S. expect from his administration? Well, uh, the ruling party, the LDP, is pretty much on the same page with economic policies. Most of the candidates agreed uh, to continue the policies of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who wanted stimulus spending, printing more money to jumpstart the economy and fight, and fight inflation. They're also in favor of a bigger, uh, a stronger alliance with the U.S., but um, on social policies, Kishida is seen as more conservative, so there's probably going to be less change there. That's NPR's Anthony Pugh joining us from Seoul. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Abe. Here in D.C., House lawmakers will vote tomorrow on an infrastructure bill that the Senate approved last month. That bill passed with the support of Senate Republicans, but only a small group of House Republicans are expected to back it. NPR's acting congressional correspondent Deirdre Walsh explains why that is. Michigan Republican Congressman Fred Upton says he's voting yes on the $1 trillion infrastructure bill when it comes up for a vote. So I have no qualms about supporting that. We need infrastructure. Uh, and. Uh, you know, we don't change the Trump tax cuts, uh, we don't raise taxes. He says during Michigan's tough winters, people complain a lot about the potholes, and that issue put the Democratic governor in office. Our governor, Gretchen Whitmer, three years ago won with one simple message, fix the damn roads. But House Republican leaders are urging their members to vote no. They say backing this bill paves the way to a larger $3.5 trillion spending bill on so-called human infrastructure, child care, health care, education programs. Upton disagrees with that strategy. They're trying to say that they're linked, but in fact, they're not linked. Uh, and I like to think we just vote on one and, and not the other. When pressed by NPR, this is how House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy explains his vote against a bill that could mean millions of dollars for his own district. Because you don't get millions of dollars for roads and broadband. What you get is $5 trillion of more inflation. You get a bigger socialist, big government. You get a harm to our economy. But there's no final price tag for that legislation, and no vote on it is scheduled yet. Oklahoma Republican Congressman Tom Cole is voting no on the infrastructure bill. He says he doesn't like that the House was left out of the negotiations. We basically surrendered. Uh, to the Senate and whatever they decided was okay. We should have done our own, gone to a conference with them on a more traditional deal. But it's not just the process. He says the connection to the bigger package makes it harder politically to back the infrastructure bill. It's been linked to a reconciliation bill that's an asking to everybody in my district. So it just makes it tough. And again, I, I think that would be true for Republicans that were inclined to be supportive of this anyway. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham was one of 19 Republicans to vote for the bill last month. I think the 1.2 trillion uh, makes sense to me. It's more good than bad. He predicted more House Republicans would back it if Democrats didn't try to link it with the broader bill. Upton says it's sad that the infrastructure issue, one that usually brings people together, is now so politically polarizing. Some say, just vote no because it gives Biden win. The country needs a win. Adam Kinzinger from Illinois says he plans to vote for the bill, but he's frustrated with both sides. Okay, let's get it done. The country needs it. Republicans reunited again. News, etc., etc. Then um, back to Chicago for some events, and there's going to be a very big event in Chicago in coming months, uh, a jubilee year for another Cabrini. And so I interviewed the, the lead person, the brand new rector of the shrine, and um, did that for my, my weekend radio show. And so this afternoon and tomorrow I'll be editing that interview with all that fabulous news, not just for Chicagoans, but sure. for the Catholic Church in general and the church in America, of course. And um, so then uh, a couple days with a cousin and lots of other friends for lunches and stuff, and then flew to Cincinnati, uh, which I had never been to, 
flew in Cincinnati on the 23rd because there's this event. I am a dame at the Order of the Holy Sepulchre. I was a keynote speaker at there um, over the weekend, and uh, Teresa, it was totally amazing. Uh, you just are not going to meet better people than the Knights and Dames of the Holy Sepulchre. Mm -hmm. Just, um, just superlative human beings. And what's so surprised me, I already knew a couple of people that I knew, knew something that they could, of course, would be at the, uh, at the meeting. I think it was a three-day event, but what I didn't know is how many people that I do know, but I didn't know they were members of the order. So to have so many, a huge number were priests, um, to have them, to meet them was just, wow, I didn't know you were here, man, you know. Mm -hmm. And some great speakers, Father Wade, of course, is UWTN, and then John Schlager, who's a
Georgia country. WNGC. More coming up. Kick off game day at the UGA bookstore for the best Bulldog gifts and apparel. Shop the latest styles from top brands like Vineyard Vines, Nike's Coach's Sideline Gear. Plus, the UGA bookstore is the exclusive home to the UGA 10 collection by Peter Millar. Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30, meet Coach Vince Dooley and UGA great and Jacksonville Jaguar Tyson Campbell, as well as UGA All-American Lindsey Scott. The UGA bookstore next to the Tate Student Center open before and after the game online at ugabookstore.com. It's where dogs shop. This is Tom, and this is Mike with Auto Gallery Chevrolet. And this is Chris with Auto Gallery Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Well, guys, this is one of my favorite seasons. What's that, Tom Paul? No, dude, college football season. And I think we should do something a little extra for the listeners. What do you suggest? This weekend, and all home games this year, we're going to do a pre-game tailgate party at both of our Auto Gallery locations in Commerce. That's correct, Tom. Um, either Auto Gallery Chevrolet or Auto Gallery Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Both are conveniently located on Highway 441 in Commerce, where we will have the grill fired up, the burgers and dogs, the pre-game on, and we'll be giving away some really neat stuff. That's right, Mike. We'll be giving away Georgia Game Day t-shirts to the first 100 people who come to the pre-tailgate party. You guys, get here early. Not only to get one of the Game Day t-shirts, but also in case you want to take a test drive in one of our Bulldog Tough Trucks. So guys, come on out this Saturday and enjoy food, fun, festivities at both of our locations. Auto Gallery Chevrolet and Auto Gallery Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Having both of you guys here reminds me of this song. We are family. Chevy Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. We are family. Hey, it's Walker back to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about right now. The fresh, vibrant, new coat of paint on my house. Big thank you to everyone over at Serta Pro Painters for making this a great process. What is the process? If you're thinking about an exterior paint job for your home or business, check this out. Give them a call. Serta Pro will set you up with a free, no obligation estimate. And they will spend a lot of time with you. Go over all the details. When you decide to move forward, they'll schedule the painting as soon as possible then it's pressure washing get rid of all that mildew and mold and then mrs walker and i's favorite part you get to sit down and choose the paint colors with a color consultant that really was fun now they paint all the surfaces with the highest quality paints serta pro cleans the tools and materials every day and at the end a thorough inspection by you to make sure you're 100 satisfied click over soon for your free estimate certapro.com slash athens there's never been a better time to switch to Spectrum Mobile. You could save hundreds of dollars on your mobile bill. Plus, there are no added taxes, hidden fees, and no contracts.